Hey guys, it's Val de Valerie. If this is your first time on my channel, well, my name is Val, but my channel is called Val de Valerie because I live in Spain and literally any time that I say that my name is Val to somebody, they never know where my name comes from, so they always have to ask, Val? Vicky. If you came to this video without having found my channel before, it's probably because you want to know how to get into university, maybe in any part of Europe, but especially in Spain. I have just graduated from doing my whole degree at a Spanish university. I went to a public Spanish university and have gotten my degree in international studies. This is how I think you can get into university in Spain. This is from my knowledge, this is what I've looked into. When I got into university in Spain, I actually had a, like a couple that helped me figure everything out I had a little bit easier so step one that I would say is definitely find somebody that can help you if you can't find anybody then research 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 like I said I've just finished my degree and obviously that was four years ago when I got into university what I did personally was after I graduated high school in 2015 I took a gap year and I came to Spain to do an exchange program I had no idea that I wanted to do university here in Spain and after those six months that's when I decided so my life is a little bit different than those of you that are graduating high school right now and you might want to be going to university in Europe but I didn't have the opportunity to see like what it's like coming straight out of high school into university. I'm going to try to give as much information as I can on that. I would also highly recommend taking some sort of gap year to breathe and figure it all out because it's a slow, stressful process. Honestly, you can't just think, ah, let me, unless you go to private, unless you go to a private university, then it might be easier, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. So just be ready, like maybe take a year to gather all of your information, take a year to come to Spain, to do the paperwork in Spain. The very first topic that we're gonna talk about is how to get into university. Like what are the options and where can you go? In Spain, there are two options. You have the private universities and the public universities. Private universities, like I said, I went to a public one. I did not choose a private university. It was one of my options because the paperwork was slow and I was like, hey, if I need to do it, I'll do it. But private universities cost maybe 15,000, 17,000. There's many different universities out there and they all have like their own price range. That's because you don't have to go through the testing process that you have to go through to get into a public university. Private route might be the option if you have the financial resources. I didn't find myself in that situation. It didn't seem like the right option because when you think about coming to Europe or Spain to do university, you think, oof, I'm gonna save a buck. Also to get into a private university, just have to turn in your, I'm pretty sure translated transcripts to that university and you get in like any other person would get in where you get in by your ranking. You can probably have to do like a personal interview, a personal statement and that's how you would get in. And it's pretty easy because you're gonna pay to get into whatever you want. This tip goes for private universities and public universities. Either way, I highly recommend sending an email to that university, explaining your situation, telling them where you're from, uh, what year you're in, what you wanna study, why you wanna go to their university, and they'll probably send you information about what it is exactly you need to do. So for the private options or the public options, first step would be to send an email. Now, the other option, which is what I did to go to school and university, is the public universities. And split from this are like two different options. <laughs> you can either get into a public Spanish university as a foreigner, or you can try to get in as like a typical Spaniard. There's advantages and disadvantages to both of these, and it depends on the exact university that you're trying to get into. My university is called University Carlos III. They have a really great program for foreigners. Almost in all the public universities, they save like a portion of the places in that degree for foreigners, but at Carlos III, at Carlos III they save like a certain amount of seats, and you can also do early admission to get that seat saved for you. I won't go too much into it because you can find that on the university website. What I'm getting at is that the public universities have a certain amount of seats saved for foreign students. Like I said, at my university, they made it easy. I got to apply early. There was more chances that I would get in because I did the early admissions process and I got straight into this one. In any of the universities that you go, the foreign route, you do not have to do the testing like you would have to do if you go the Spanish route. What testing am I talking about? If you were around in Spain five years ago, you would have heard the word selectividad. Now you will hear the word eval. If you want to take the eval, which is just like the selectividad, just different, it's what all the high schoolers in Spain have to take. And if you're going to try to get in as a Spaniard, 
I mean, they know you're not Spanish, but the route as a Spaniard, you have to take this test. I highly recommend not going the Spanish route because this test is, I want to say impossible. I'm sure there's people that have done it, but almost impossible for anybody that is not Spanish and that you have not gone to a Spanish high school. Why would I even want to go the Spanish route then if I could do the foreign route and just ignore doing all the testing? The spots that there are for a foreigner are very slim. You don't have that many options. So imagine that you want to do what I did, international studies. There's 80 places. They reserve five of these places for international students. You don't know how many international students are going to apply. Maybe you want to be sure of yourself and go the Spanish route and use like your knowledge and everything to compete against everybody else. That way you can be one in 75 instead of one in five. In two examples that I know in Madrid, my foreign route, which was the early application process, that was super easy. And then there's another one called Alcala, Alcala, Alcala de Enares, Enares. No me acuerdo. Stucky. What they would do was they would put all the places and they would accept all like the Spanish people first. And then if there was any extra spaces later in October, they would call you and be like, hey, we have this space. Do you want it? To me, that's a little bit sketchy. So like, not sketchy, but you're not guaranteed to have a spot. When you go to a Spanish university, you're not getting into that university and then choosing whatever degree you want. You're applying to a specific degree and that specific degree has certain standards of what grades you need to have to get in. It has a certain amount of places, like amount of people that were allowed to get in. So you compete only against the foreigners for the specific amount of places that that university has set apart from all the other places just for foreign students. In order to do this, you must validate, do la homologación, from like your degree that you did in high school or whatever your highest form of education was in your country. Below in the description, I will link what like the official website is about what you need to turn in in order to do that. We need to discuss how slow Spanish bureaucracy is. This is what I'm saying. Maybe take some time to figure out how to get your whole application together because la homologación, I think it took almost like eight months in order for me to get that back and many four months before that even just trying to get all like the paperwork together in order to do that you figure out what degree you want you do your homologación the good thing about turning in all of your paper for the homologación is even if you just have it turned in you can already start looking at universities the risky part of this is what i did too is that if you don't have your homologación accepted by the time you start your degree then if your homologación comes back denied as if it's not equal to being a Spanish high school diploma, then you get to kicked out of your degree. If you went to some private school or you were homeschooled, I would doubt that they're going to actually uh, validate your studies being equal to the Spanish system, so be careful. But any other public high school, mine was a typical public high school, mine was validated. Don't take my word, please. It's a recommendation that maybe it would be okay. Start your homologación cuanto antes as soon as you can, so that you're not running the risk of starting your degree without that homologación validated. Now, if you're gonna go the other way where you say, I'd rather be one in 80 because you think that you're, not because your head's big, but like, I'm intelligent, I studied a lot, I could probably do the AVA, and I could probably do really well on it, then you would need to come to Spain and take the AVA evaluation, which is in the spring of every year, I'm not actually sure if there's an option to do that online. I doubt it a lot. You would need to look into how you could take the AVAL, and then you would take that, and depending on that score, you would directly apply to the university and say, this is the score that I got on this test. Now, this test is made up of a whole bunch of subjects that the students take while they are in high school. There's some basic ones that are like required, and then you have other ones, depending on what your degree is, that would depend, like if you want to do medicine, maybe you have to take biology and chemistry. If you want to do uh, like arts, then you would have to do economy and other stuff. And that's basically it about how to get into university. I would go the foreign route in my personal recommendation because I think that the A route is completely ridiculous, even for Spanish students. Not ridiculous, if you're American, it's kind of like our SAT score, but they, like whatever they directly study at school is what is on their exam. And there can also be things like history, geography, whereas I'm pretty sure that the SAT is just reading math and writing and sometimes science. And those are basically just like general knowledge that you learn either on your own and also at school, but it's not so much like you're going to school for a year to take this exam. Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is the prices. Like I said, if you're looking at a private university, you're looking at paying up 
upwards of 15, 17, 20,000, depends on what university you go to. And then the public university, here's the thing, if you can somehow become a European resident, do it before you come to Spain, that way you can pay Spanish resident prices. In Spain, there's four different tiers of like prices. First time that you take a subject, you pay price one, okay? That's price one. I'm pretty sure per credit, so you'd pay whatever that is times the amount of credits that it is. If you fail that class, the following year you have to pay price two. If you fail that class again, the following year you have to pay price three. And if you fail that class again and you take it for a fourth time, then you pay price four. Now, if you come in directly as a foreigner, you're straight up paying price four right away. So. In my experience this year, all of my friends, they were paying a thousand or less than a thousand a year, but I was paying things that, and my parents were paying because they're amazing, around 7,000 a year because I had to pay that fourth credit level. 7,000 a year still sounds a lot better than what it would be in the United States, but whatever your country is, you need to decide if that is rentable, if it's worth it for you or not. The next thing that you need to know to study in Spain is your visa and then your TA. So your visa you must do from your home country. I'm going to speak probably more to Americans right now because I don't wanna I don't know how things happen in other countries. So my American friends, you must apply for your visa at your home country and in your embassy of your region. You need to find out what a Spanish embassy is in your region. I'm from Pennsylvania and my embassy is in New York. That means that when I had all my visa work ready, I had to take that up to New York and drop it off by hand at the York, New York embassy. One time I had the second time that I did my visa, um, I had a cousin that was living in New York, so I sent all my paperwork to her and she took it up to the embassy for me, but it is something that has to be dropped off by hand in the mailbox. So that's fine. You get your visa back within a couple weeks. You have to pay a certain amount of money. It's what you all find online. You just have to do student visa, Spain. You have all the information there. And then after that, very, very important to know, after you come to Spain, after 90 days in Spain, if you're going to be here for more than 90 days, as soon as you get here, you need to apply for your TA. Okay? Tarjeta de... ¿Cómo es? Tarjeta de... Creo que es tarjeta de identificación de extranjeros me suena así but this card is going to be your new visa okay so in your passport every this is going to be your only student visa that you will ever have for the four years that's in your passport but then your da your resident i call it a residency card somebody on another video said it wasn't a residency card don't know what you call it then tarjeta de identificación don't know you have to get this card and every year you will renew this card which means that every single year when you have the expiration date you must renew it now so you come to spain you know that you're going to be for over 90 days i will put a link into how to get your ta down below and you must come apply do the paperwork pay the fee you get approved for your ta and then you have to make another appointment at the police station to get your fingerprints done and you do that and then every year when your card expires you must go and do the whole process again for every single year that you are here studying i've done it for four years straight not fun it's a headache but it's going to be your life as a as a student in spain it's something to really have in cuenta take into account that it's a little bit of a headache uh living in a country that's not your own because there's a lot of paperwork involved pay a little bit more money than everybody else but that's important to know if you're going to study in spain the other thing that you need to know when you come to spain is where are you going to live i know to get your visa you must already have your place that you're going to live chosen and rented before you come to spain if you go to a university like mine there is a residency hall that a lot of spanish students went to they loved it and they made like their best friends there ever so i would really recommend it if your university has a residency hall it's not the most typical thing to do in spain a lot of people just live with their parents they stay at home but if you can afford it i would do it if not there is a website that i recommend it's called alumni uh that will be in the description box as well that is for students i recommend this for students like when you come to spain because it's very trustworthy like all the pictures that are on the website you know exactly what your room is going to look like if it doesn't look like that when you get here uh you have the company that can be like yo this girl was expecting this or this boy was expecting this and it's not here so make sure that you get your housing before you come to spain and if you already have some friends in spain then i would definitely recommend like 
just going to like live with your friends, getting a flat with your friends. But if not, try to get into a flat where you're going to be able to meet people. Maybe not pick a flat of two people, pick a flat with five people or go to a residency hall where you're going to be meeting people. Stay close, but not too close to campus. It depends on where your campus is. If you live right in the middle of whatever city you're going to in Spain, that's totally a personal option. I don't think that really affects your experience on univers at university in Spain very much because there's not really much campus life. In the end, you're going to be hanging out with your friends in this wherever the city is that you are in that city and doing different things. And being that close to university is only important if you are going to study really, really hard and want to be out on campus all the time. Another thing that you need to know if you want to do university in Spain is the languages. So remember that each, a lot of the regions in Spain have their own languages, like regional languages. So I'm in Madrid. Thankfully, I only have to deal with Castellano. If you go to Galicia, que hablan ahí? Eh, Galic no, que hablan ahí? No sé, galicianos. Dime en los comentarios lo que hablas ahí. In Catalonia, hablan catalán. So when you're looking at your degree, remember to look what language your classes are in. And my degree in international studies, I honestly, I was like, I can do bilingual because I was confident in my Spanish, but international studies at the Carlos III was only given in English. So I've studied my whole degree in English. If you don't know any Spanish, find a degree that is done in English. If you wanna try to stretch yourself, there are some degrees that are done bilingual. There's some that are offered even in other languages. Make sure to check what language your degree is going to be in. A lot of you guys have written to me on Instagram. You always just ask for my best advice. My best advice is to be patient, be strong-minded, do a lot of research, get your head in there, like really just look for what you want. I unfortunately don't have all the answers. I wish that I did, but if you have any questions at all, write to me on Instagram at Valle Valerie and I will answer to my best of my knowledge. I have the way that I did it, which you can find more information in my other video about exactly how I did it. So guys, that's everything that you need to know about how to get into university in Spain. Obviously here, there's not all the information in the world because everybody's situation is completely different depending on where you're coming from, how old you are, what it is you wanna study, there's a million and five options, so I can't give you for each and every situation. But if you have any questions or doubts, just message me on Instagram. I'll try to answer you as best as you can or leave them in the comments. Any other videos that you guys want to see, leave that in the comment. And if you've ever gone to university in another country, please tell me about your experience in the comments and like what your best advice would be. Because obviously I don't know everything and you guys have your all, all of your own experiences too and it would be great to hear what your experience was like. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. We're so close to a thousand subscribers and that would mean the world to me. So if you could click that little subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next videos. Thanks so much for watching. Ciao.